if I can't ever begin to feel that way about him again, I don't deserve him, in my opinion. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? All right, guys, what the fuck is up? Okay, today we're gonna be addressing all of the where is Jay questions. And um, I thought many times about how I wanna do this video, if I wanna dress up hella sexy, which I was going to do, but then I was like, I just set up right before I put on all my sexy stuff, I'm just gonna do this because the sexy stuff is gonna take 15 minutes and then I won't be in the same headspace right now as ready as I am to do this video. So fuck it, maybe you guys will actually listen more to what I'm saying and I think the topic in itself is interesting enough without all of the titty, which is there. You got a little titty, all right? So let's just get into it. First of all, um, if you guys are wondering what the fuck I'm even talking about, Many of you have been asking where Jay is, who has been my life partner for the last 15 years. Some of you might have noticed that the background in which I am filming is different often, if not always, these days. You guys might have noticed that I'm a little bit more inconsistent or that I'm going on more trips, doing more outdoorsy things that aren't just hiking for a day and then coming home and then working. You might have noticed that on Valentine's Day I posted um, Hunter, who is my new boyfriend and actually confirmed that he is now my boyfriend. And you guys, understandably, are very, very confused. I thought about scripting this, but honestly, scripting is only gonna make me more concise, but speaking less from the heart, which is not my preferred way of doing videos. And to be honest, if you guys don't really understand where I'm coming from, which is completely fine, by the way, I'm not hating on you for maybe disagreeing with me or thinking I'm making a mistake or anything like that, like that's your right to think that. I would rather speak from the heart and have some people not understand and make their own opinions rather than script something and then get all stressed out about the script and then still probably forget to talk about something. So to get the first thing out of the way, any misconception about Jay not being in my life, I wanna squash that right now. I saw Jay yesterday. We went on a hike, we did some stuff for my Jeep, etc. There is never a situation in my life where I can imagine Jay not being a huge part of my life, let alone me not seeing him anymore or not talking to him. Uh, we're still best friends. He'll always be my best friend. I'll give you the backstory of Jay and I like really quick, like a synopsis of our entire relationship because a lot of people also seem to think that I've cheated on Jay or I was actually dating Jay or Jay and I were married, like a bunch of weird shit. It seems like people have just seen Jay in my videos and just assumed that he was my long-term monogamous boyfriend, even though, you know, I guess it's hard to see every video of mine, but it's been very clear in many videos that we weren't the normal traditional boyfriend-girlfriend relationship thing. Anyway, but Jay and I are still best friends. I see him multiple times a week and uh, I can't imagine a world in which I didn't so he's not gone In fact, the last video we did together the one about prenups I think it was called is this really gold digging or something that happened during me and Hunter Dating me and Hunter have been dating like kind of exclusively since the end of November so Jay and I Jay and I met in high school. I was a freshman, he was a junior. We dated, I think, for like three or four years, maybe less than that, until we decided that we wanted to have more of like a best friend, life partner, open relationship type relationship. If you guys wanna watch about our relationship, nothing really changed up until now. It's called my non-monogamous lifestyle or non-monogamous sex life or something. I'll put that in the description so you can kind of better understand where we were coming from for the last 15 years. Uh, 15 to 17, I think. We've lived together for like 15 and we've been together for like 17 doing this thing. So it's not this thing where I was married to this guy or I was dating him and then I just decided to cheat on him and up and leave. We were in a relationship where I could see other people occasionally and I did it very occasionally. I think since I've had this YouTube channel, I've only been with like three other guys or something like that. And Jay was allowed to see other people and then we also had threesomes, all that jazz. It was great, he's still my best friend. He's the only person I've ever trusted. And I want you guys to know that like, whether or not you believe me, I don't care, but I want you guys to know that I never lied to you every time I said I felt like my life was perfect. Like I was living with my best friend, doing what I love for a living. It, it was perfect, like my life was perfect. I was self-actualizing, I had the money to do so. I was doing things that I wanted to do all the time. So 
imagine my surprise when I consistently for the last couple years felt like something was missing. I'm a very submissive person in a relationship. Like I'm a dominant person outside of a relationship, but my ideal relationship is one in which I take care of my partner and I do everything for my partner and I submit sexually and also a little bit in the lifestyle to my partner, not in like a role play way, but in like a like, I'd rather he make the big decisions and I'll always make him food and take care of him even if I'm the one that's working harder. I'll submit in the bedroom. I'll like suck his dick for a long time because I really enjoy that because it makes him feel good because I'm a pleaser in bed as well. And those are the kinds of things that turn me on and make me happy in a relationship. So the last couple years I've been feeling less and less like I wanted to do that or that it was natural with Jay. In the beginning of our relationship in the beginning and even up until like five years ago, I always like loved making him food. Even when I was tired, I just like liked doing everything I possibly could for him. But at some point I started to get more and more like just short tempered with him and I felt like there was passion missing. I felt like at first, he was the one not having passion for me because Jay's not very an expressive person. Like, don't get me wrong, the sex is amazing. Like, he can fuck like a god. And it's so weird because he's objectively like my perfect man. You know, like bearded, tall, really buff, fit, tan, dark eyes, dark features. He's always exactly what I would explain when someone asked me what my favorite type of man was or my like dream man. It was always Jay. But for some reason I started to feel like he was losing interest in me and I think that's what I was telling myself because he isn't very like lovey-dovey, come up behind you, hug you, like all this stuff. Like we would cuddle and we would have great like painful, painful sex with his big cock and everything. But I started to feel like even though I was coming in the sex, something was missing. And so I was telling him like, have more passion for me, touch me all over, grab me, manhandle me, start the sex without saying, hey, do you wanna have sex? I was saying like all these things that I thought would help and when he would try, I still at the end of it, even though I had like multiple orgasms and everything, I was feeling unfulfilled in a way. It was weird, it was like, I was explaining it as his loss of passion for me or me needing more passion, but really I think I was the one that was losing passion for some reason. Now my theory as to to why this is, is not concrete. There are a few things. I think one is that we've been together for so long that like I had baggage from the beginning of our relationship that I hadn't let go of. So now that I'm this new person, now that I feel like I'm a more well-rounded, well-adjusted person who can control their emotions a lot better and is good at emotion regulation and all that stuff and I'm not gonna fly off the handle or be super jealous or be super insecure, I felt like that past was still kind of lingering. And this is a me problem. A lot of this is a me problem. In fact, I would go as far as to say as like most of it is a me problem. But like often, if there was just a hint of something that reminded Jay of the past, he would unintentionally, I think, make me feel like I was still that person from high school. And in high school, I was a very jealous, manipulative, controlling, insecure person. And I've worked my entire life to self-actualize away from that. So often I would feel very very turned off or very not motivated to be that like perfect submissive girlfriend that I like to be or that perfect submissive partner, whatever you want to call it. And so like it felt like a struggle to be that. This is all really abstract and weird because it's really hard for me to put to words these things that I felt. But I really just wanted to like start over with Jay, you know, like I wanted to wipe his memory and have him meet me as the person I am now, hotter, cooler, better, more stoic, more well balanced, a better person, a better partner. I wanted like to start over with him, you know, but like I felt like I kept having these emotions arise just slightly and even when they're just slight like a normal amount of like insecurity or jealousy or a normal amount of me being kind of bitchy or something it would always trigger that memory of the explosive type of person that I was back when I met Jay and then that would always turn me off and then it I don't know if it's true because he says it's not but I always felt like in the back of his head he was like she's still that person you know and it would hurt me a lot because I worked so hard to not be that person and then another problem I think is that we were just too close. We were together like 24 seven. And you know how they say like, what is it? Uh, distance makes you want someone more. I like, for some reason I'm blanking on that saying. But something I really like about me and Hunter's relationship is even though I wanna be with him 24 seven and he seems to feel the same way about me, he has to go to work. So when he comes home, I'm like, oh my God, I missed you so much. And it's like this swelling of passion. And I think with Jay and I for the last 15 years, we've been together 24 seven. So there was a bit of 
too much comfort there. With all these little problems in there, I still felt like I had a perfect relationship. I still, every time I like fucked around with a guy like Frank, like Toby, all of the guys that I had in my past in my open relationships that Jay knew about and was fine with, I would always indulge in the like honeymoon type passion. But like when I thought about like, would I leave Jay for this guy? Or would I like leave my perfect life here with Jay, with Eve, with my perfect bachelorette slash bachelor pad and my life of playing video games and doing everything, would I leave for these people? No, even though I was indulging in this passion, I was like, fuck no, like never. Like I remember uh, when I wanted to like go away for a week to see these guys or whatever, like I just felt this strong like urge to get back to Jay. I remember one of the times I went traveling to see Toby, I got a speeding ticket because when I got back after three or four days of a trip, I was like, I need to see Jay, oh my fucking God. And I was like speeding to get home. Like there was never a doubt in my mind that this was the person I wanted to be with even though I felt like I had these small problems that I was trying to work on but didn't really see any way to rectify. So I never thought that I would be like leaving that life or anything. I thought I was just gonna work on it. Maybe we would fix it. I often forgot about the problems. Like I didn't really care. The sex was good and I was just focusing on work and focusing on like changing my body or like going on vacations with Jay, like hiking and stuff. That I would often stop thinking about this but when they did come up, it would be like, well, this sucks. I hope we can work on it. I'd talk to Jay about it. Maybe we would argue a little bit or maybe we would try to fix it and then it would kind of go back to where it was. I also felt like a lot of it was that I wasn't my perfect form and like Jay prefers really skinny girls. So like maybe he didn't like me as much, but he assured me and I do believe him that like he still thought I was like the sexiest woman in the world, still loved fucking me. It seemed like he loved fucking me. So in hindsight, it really feels like it was just me having that mental block entirely to the point where it was just like sex became mechanical rather than passionate. And kudos to him and his giant dick for still making me come so many times while I was having these hangups because there was no like me not being able to come or me not being actually physically satisfied to where I'm like, oh, I'm just not attracted to this guy anymore. Like I knew I was attracted to him and I knew when I looked at him, he was perfect, but there was like just something there, something like too familiar or like a problem or some baggage that I had. I don't, I don't fucking know, but I saw it as him not being as like throwing me around as I wanted or him not being as touchy as I wanted. And I was probably repressing the fact that I was just too close to him to be in love with him, which is something that I need as a person who really loves passion. So fast forward, um, Jay starts dating more on Tinder. He's seeing like multiple girls randomly and um, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, well I'm open to it now. Um, it's summer, it's nice, whatever. And I got the jury duty and I meet Hunter and I'm like, this guy seems so vanilla and so boring that like, there's no way there's gonna be any kind of problem of him falling in love with me and me being like, oh, well maybe whatever, you know, like he's just very vanilla. Might as well fuck him, have a little bit of that honeymoon passion and then leave, right? Or like, you know, let it come to its end conclusion when he falls in love with me or gets bored with me, who knows, right? So I start seeing him and after the first night, like in the morning when we fucked again, it was just like a crazy explosion of passion, but it wasn't, like I wasn't considering anything, you know? And as time went on more and more, I found myself like fast forward, you know, I don't need the details shown to you. I've already told you guys all the details about Hunter really, or everything I kind of want to tell. I don't know, we'll see, maybe in the future. But I started to fall in love with him, like actually fall in love with him. I started to, want to be around Hunter more than I wanted to make sure I spent all this time with Jay, but still at the same time, like Jay was my best friend, the only person I trusted, the person I wanted to tell everything to. And I just kind of realized that like, you know what, like I've been with the same person for 15 years. I've never had a real experience of dating or knowing exactly what I want. The, the first inception of me getting into the open relationship, even though that's what I wanted to be okay with, I've never had like a real adult monogamous relationship. And I feel like me wondering what that would be like, or me falling in love with someone else is gonna make it so that I can never truly see and appreciate my relationship with Jay as I should. So I was like, fuck, you know, like I wanna try this thing that I'm so drawn to and I wanna try do it right. And not only am I gonna get that like restart to where I can treat Hunter the way I wanted to treat Jay when we first met, but I didn't have the mental capacity cause I was like 12. And it's just like, I wanna do this as harsh as it seems because then I'll know. Then I'll know if maybe like passion is something you just can't keep 
which I don't agree with. I think that like, as long as you do things right, as you, as long as you have a little bit of separation, as long as you like work at it, you can keep that passion. And I'm not talking about like the crazy honeymoon phase. Like I'm aware that the honeymoon phase lasts only like six months and that you idealize your partner and then you start realizing like their downfalls and you have to start working with them. And it's actually like, kind of a job to be a teammate with someone. But in my head, I couldn't always wonder what if, like what if I'm just with Jay because he's my friend and not because I'm in love with him? What if I'm just doing what's comfortable? And being with Hunter has made me realize that I'm not as perfect and self-actualized as I thought I was. Obviously I didn't think I was perfect, but I thought I was pretty close to perfect emotional regulation, perfect knowledge of self and all this stuff. But this has thrown me into like a completely different world where I have to be a lot more independent and where I have to actually put this idea that I can be this ideal partner as long as I just started over to the test and I'm learning so much about myself. So for me, this is like a growth moment. I I know a lot of people have said like, oh, this is like a midlife crisis thing, but I don't like feel a crisis. I, for the last five years, I've been feeling like something was missing and now I'm finding out whether or not something actually is. Do I expect Jay to sit around and wait for me? No, in fact, he's got like a kind of pseudo girlfriend. I don't wanna like divulge too much information about him or her, but like we go out a double date, like Jay, his girl, me and Hunter and like other friends, we've been going out more. They go out all the time. They see each other every other day. Jay is not alone by any means. And I'm still like there as a friend. It has been hard on him, definitely. He has been confused. He has blamed me for things. He has misunderstood my intentions. And I do sometimes feel like I'm fucking up and making the biggest mistake of my life. But what's worse than making a mistake in my opinion is never knowing and then blaming Jay for that part of my life that's missing instead of finding out for sure and then like begging for him to come back or us just being friends as it should be. I don't know what's right, but all I know is what I'm doing right now is I'm following a path that I feel will at the end give me clarity because that something that was missing was nagging and I don't think it's fair for me to look at Jay, the person who is like the visage of perfection to me and not feel much, you know, and like have like a little bit of resentment there for him. It was not fair to him. And it's not fair to him for me to look at Hunter and be like, this is exactly what I want. And then take Jay for granted or to keep going through open relationship guys for the passion and not having the passion there with Jay. Like Jay's new fuck buddy slash girlfriend looks at him the way that I used to, the way that I felt that I should, the way that I should based on like what my perfect man is. And I feel like that's what he deserves. So in that way, even though it's a little sad. Um, I feel like I'm happy because he deserves to be adored that way. He deserves to have someone make him cupcakes on Valentine's Day again that says best cock ever. If I can't ever begin to feel that way about him again, I don't deserve him in my opinion because to me he is objectively perfect. I'm just not feeling that passion either because he doesn't give it to me or because I don't give it to him anymore. Even despite trying and trying to change things in my mindset and trying new things, it just wasn't working. And I feel like the one thing that can work, if anything works, is space and realizing what I've lost because I've lost him. I got too comfortable with always having him, you know? So either this is gonna reignite passion for Jay and later down the line, we're gonna be back together or we'll just remain friends and we'll work through it and he'll be happier because he's getting what he deserves and I'll be getting what I deserve, which is either a life partner and Hunter or someone else or forever aloneness, which I, fuck, I, maybe I deserve that. Maybe I'm being so selfish. I know in the back of my mind that it's possible that I'm making the biggest mistake of my life and that I'm gonna end up alone forever. I know that I can't rely on Jay if I decide to like not live with him or not be with him as much and give him as much attention as I used to. I know I'm not entitled to his time. I just hope that I'm still valuable enough as a best friend to have him around because I can't imagine not having him in my life. I think right now, we're at a better spot than we were at a few months ago when this started, where like every time we saw each other, we would bicker and fight about it, or he would be really sad, or I would be really sad. I know that I'm repressing a lot of the fear and anxiety and sadness that I have for not having Jay around. And often I'm just like, I wish I could share this with Jay. I wish I could share this moment with Jay. Like I would rather like, let's just go home and sit on the couch and play Assassin's Creed and go back to normal. Let's just forget, forget how this whole fucking thing happened. Sometimes I feel that way, but I want to power through because I know that like, not only would I be leaving someone I love, like I genuinely love Hunter. I'm in love with Hunter and I love Hunter and I love our life together and life changes and I have to be okay with that. I hate change as a person. I hate independence like 
complete independence where I'm all alone and have to do like chores alone or I have to run errands alone. I hate all of that shit, but I want to grow as a person. And I want to fully know that who I'm with or the life I'm leading is the correct one for me. And I feel like this is the only way to know is to have some time apart from Jay and to pursue this thing that fell into my lap that I did not think or did not want to become a thing that just did become a thing. And it's not perfect either. I'm not idealizing it. I think we're still in the honeymoon phase probably because I fucking can't keep my hands off a hunter. Oh my fucking God. You saw in the video, if you watched the lingerie video with us, that's like how we are all the time. But at the same time, I understand his flaws and I'm trying to work with them. And I'm also trying to see people more objectively rather than idealizing a crush and then turning that into a really toxic relationship. And I don't want you to hate Hunter or Jay or me, but you know, I completely understand if you guys are like team Hunter, team Jay, that's like completely fine. Um, I just want you guys to know that I'm doing what I think is best. And if you guys want to like unsubscribe or hate me for it, or, you know, it's kind of anxiety inducing to think about how like a lot of people looked at me as like a kind of like a beacon. This is really narcissistic to say, but like I've seen comments that say this, like, uh, it's really nice how intelligent I am or like I'm a beacon of rationality or something. But like, I feel like I've been, I've done a lot more crying recently without even feeling like I want to cry. Like I'll drink and then just like start crying. And it's so embarrassing in front of Hunter and his friends because it's like not who I've ever been. I've always been very chill, at least in, since high school. And I feel like a lot of that stuff is coming back up. And I feel like this time I have the chance to look it in the face and resolve it. So yeah, that's what's going on. It's nothing catastrophic. We didn't have this huge breakup. It's as amicable as it could be with one party not wanting me to go down this path and the other party feeling like I need to, me. If you wanna make some fun out of it, cause you know, at the end of the day, YouTube is entertainment. You can go Team Hunter, Team J. I've seen a lot of Team J, which is heartwarming. I always send Jay the good comments and then I'll read off the funny or good comments about Hunter to Hunter. And um, I'm open to anything. I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of stuff. If you guys have any questions, I'll go through it later maybe or like answer it in other videos. I have so much other stuff to do today and I really just wanna do the Cancun video. I wanna talk about how I'm like snowboarding and all these fun things, but there was always like this, I gotta talk about what's going on with me and Jay and Hunter looming in the background. And by no means do I feel like I was forced to make this video. I know that even though I've been so open in the past, I could totally have like this one thing that I don't wanna talk about, but I want to. I want this to be out there. I want to be able to reference this anytime someone sees Hunter in a video and is like, what the hell? And don't expect Jay to not be on this channel. Like anything philosophical where we talk about stuff like we did with the prenups, like that's gonna be Jay because that's the person that I talk to about that kind of stuff. Like Hunter's brain is full of law and I don't think he's had much time to think philosophy or like do any self-actualization. So Jay and I have that kind of rapport where we talk about the more difficult, more abstract topics and we really mesh that way. And I don't know, I don't want you guys to give me validation or anything. I don't want you guys to tell me what to do or give me advice, really. I mean, you can, you can do all of that. It's up to you what you do in the comment section. I just wanted to let you guys know where I stand and try to put it to words, the things that I've been feeling and why I feel it's so important for me to try this because at the end of the day, I'll end up resenting Jay Moore for not having tried this thing when I feel like there's an emptiness in me. And I feel like at the end, if we do end up back together somehow, like living our perfect life or whatever, that I will know for sure at that point. And that any problems that we do have residually, like let's say we're supposed to re reignite my passion or whatever, like those can be worked on wholeheartedly because I won't be feeling like, well, I'm working on something that's like beating a dead horse or like it's so unhealthy to have been together for so long or be together 24 seven. And if we got back, there would be changes and all that. But right now I'm just trying to live my life. So hopefully I can hit my stride and get back to creating content regularly. I've been trying to, but like it's weird because before Hunter, I would literally work three months in a row with no days off and then Jay would be like, we need to do stuff together. So I would take a week or something. With Hunter, sporadically, we'll just go weekends snowboarding or something. So it's hard for me to plan ahead and stuff and I've just been letting go of things that I don't necessarily need to do for my income, like YouTube, and just kind of taking it a little easier, not beating myself up and just trying to find my place in the world right now. Cause um, this transition has been very weird 
and it's not the same schedule that I had before. I actually have like a scheduler where I wake up at 5 a.m. and then go to bed at 9 p.m. Like that's like my schedule now because of Hunter. To end this on a note where you guys might better understand how I feel about Hunter, I've never had someone understand and play off of my sense of humor like Hunter does. Like Jay and I have a similar sense of humor, but he's more like Seinfeld dry humor and I'm more like observational, like you have to have an imagination to think it's funny sense of humor or like someone says something wrong and then you use your imagination to make it like hilarious. And so even though Jay understands after 15 years my sense of humor and can play off of it, like Hunter has a very similar sense of humor to me. So we just like go off of each other. And as his sister said to one of our friends, like we vibe really well. I feel like he's very passionate just like I am. And that works really well. We both have a similar sex drive, like his his dick just hits the right fucking spots for me. He's dominant, but not in like an overly cringy way. And he's also oddly very non-toxic. Like he encourages me to do things. When I was like, oh, I miss going hiking. He encourages me to go do that. He goes out and has like guy nights, but then encourages me to also have friends or whatever. And like, what I really love about our dynamic is he'll come home a little drunk and then that would be like really hot sex. I love waiting for him to come home from work or from going out. I like going out and actually having time for friends, which is also kind of put a damper on how often I upload and stuff. Stuff, but I'm trying to get a hang of just the balance of everything. I've never had to balance anything before. I was just like 100% work and then any other time I have, I'm spending with Jay. So now I gotta balance Jay, other friends, work, having a boyfriend, etc. It's very fucking weird, but it's making me grow as a person. I really do feel like this is something I had to do. And I really do feel like even though Hunter has many flaws, he's a good person and I've organically fallen in love with him even when I didn't want to or even think it was possible. Like Hunter and I go on adventures together and have so much fucking fun and then we'll have days where we just lay in the love sack that he bought me and watch TV and cuddle and it's like, Everything is perfect with him. Every day is worth it, even when stuff kind of sucks. We've got each other's backs like teammates and it just feels great. Like he makes me so happy. So even though it may not last forever, or even though, you know, something might happen and we might break up right now, I am so happy and I feel like we are a great team and we're working on becoming a better team and I'm excited for the future. So hopefully you don't write off Hunter as just like a random fuck boy that like I've honeymoon phased into making the worst and biggest decision of my life and see him more as an individual who I love and respect that. If you can't, that's cool, but I wanted to give you a little bit of insight so maybe you can work toward it. So I hope you guys give me your blessing and continue to follow my journey. Nothing should change for you. Like I've only fucked like three guys since I met you guys on YouTube. And uh, even though I'm like monogamous right now, that's not like a hard set fast rule. Um, Hunter and I are still gonna have threesomes. It's gonna be like pretty similar to Jay and I, just different. Um, we actually identify as boyfriend and girlfriend, but it really doesn't change anything for you. He doesn't mind what I do as a job or that I have an OnlyFans. He's not like weirdly jealous, but he is possessive in a way that I find hot, a non-toxic possessiveness that is pretty fun and Oh, he's just reignited my spark. So we'll see where it goes. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I hope any of this made sense. I'll see you in the next video. Finally, we can talk about things that are Hunter related that are not just, oh my God, where's Jay? Let's do it. Cancun vlog, here we come. Mm. Bye guys. Oh, and one more thing. I know a lot of you guys have been saying things like, oh my God, she's a gold digger. She's like fucking hypergamying. I might be in one, in some way like subconsciously hypergamying, which I don't really think so because like whatever. Anyway, I make five times more than Hunter does and Jay was like making a decent amount of money at poker before COVID. He also has master's degrees and shit and can pick that up at any time to be an electronic engineer, which is very sought after. The tech industry is crazy. The choice for him to help me with my career, which he still does, we still share a bank account, is ours together and not something that's finite. So if he ever needed to make money, that would be fine. When I get old, we had a plan to make money. So it has nothing to do with money. I'm not a money person. So if you want to believe that it was like a financial hypergamy, guy makes more money type of thing, you can, but it's just like not true. And I did want to address it because I know a lot of people were saying that in the comments because they know that Hunter's a lawyer and don't really know the ambiguous way that Jay makes money. So they were like assuming. So yeah, there's that. Think what you want, but those are the facts. All right. Bye for real now.